QPR are currently one of the best teams in the championship after having a terrible start to the 23-24 season. Half our fans have gone home, so what I'd like to say to them is you should have stayed. Yeah, our boys need you, you should have stayed, why didn't you stay? It's been from rags to riches as Marty Cifuentes' men look to mount a playoff charge late on in the season. What's he getting? What's he getting? This is the big question. What's he getting? That tastes like promotion! Yeah! Okay, it may be a little bit late for promotion this season, but the turnaround at the club has been astonishing. QPR fans were already booking their train tickets to Exeter and Burton in mid-October, but thanks to a Marty masterclass, the club look ever more likely to maintain their spot in the most competitive league in the world for their 10th consecutive season. So what has been going on at QPR? And how has this team that were consistently fighting for those prestigious playoff spots under Mark Warburton found themselves in this position in the first place? Following a disappointing end to the 21-22 season, which saw QPR drop from 4th position at the end of February down to 11th by the end of the season, the club decided it was time to move on from Mark Warburton, splitting the opinion of the fans. QPR would then opt to replace him with a relatively unknown coach in the form of Michael Beale. Despite his lack of experience as a head coach, Michael Beale was highly respected and many even considered him to be the tactician behind Steven Gerrard's title success at Rangers. The pool that came with the new manager, alongside his time working at some of Europe's biggest clubs, allowed him to bring in some new and exciting talent into this QPR team. Jake Clark Salter, Tim Eric Bonham, Kenneth Powell, Ethan Laird. QPR would get off to a flying start under their new head coach and it looked like a team that could really push for a ticket into the promised land. The new signings seemed to click immediately and the Beal had got the old guard firing again. Both Chris Willock and Ilias Chair had returned to their position as two of the best attacking players in the championship, with Willock registering six goals in his first nine games and Chair adding three goals and five assists over the same amount of games. McBeal was getting the recognition he deserved as well, getting nominated for Championship Manager of the Month and the only way was up for this West London outfit. Fast forward to October 19th, 2022. QPR had only lost two of their last 10 matches and had the chance to go top of the championship with a win over Cardiff City. However, the biggest story coming out of Loftus Road on this day was that Mick Beale had been formally approached by the Premier League team Wolves to fill their vacant managerial position. Beale was quiet in his pre-match interview and he tried to avoid the question. This feeling spilled over into the stadium as an eerie Loftus Road wasn't sure whether or not to celebrate the 3-0 win that took them to the top of the league or to mourn the possible loss of the most promising times the club had seen in the last eight seasons. The following day saw the celebration finally kicking in as it was reported. Wolves' managerial search, they wanted to speak to QPR manager Mick Beale, but he has turned down the opportunity. Releasing a statement about loyalty and reassuring the fans that he can't be the first one to run away from the ship. Fans were delighted with this decision and commended Beale for his loyalty as it's hard to come by a manager that puts loyalty above everything else. You could see that he really could see the bigger picture. He says something and he sticks with it. A few moments later. Let's get to the big breaking news then. It's just reached us. We are expecting an announcement today and it's being confirmed by the club. Mick Beale has been appointed the new Rangers manager. Oh, just one month after he came out with this statement about not jumping ship, Mick Beale does in fact jump ship and joins Glasgow Rangers. His replacement is former Blackpool boss Neil Critchley. His similar style of football was brought in to keep QPR competing for those playoff spots. And he makes an immediate impact, winning his first game. Maybe it's not all bad. Wait, yes it is. QPR would go on to not win any of their next 11 games and plummet down the table, which would result in Neil Critchley being sacked with the worst points per game tally of any permanent QPR manager in history, leaving the club in 17th place, eight points away from the relegation zone. QPR now in free fall needed someone to steady the sinking ship and who better than club legend and rock and roll star Gareth Ainsworth. <laughs> came in with his long luscious hair, button down shirt and snakeskin boots. But it wasn't just his outfits that were a change of style at QPR. They would no longer try to play passing football and would instead opt for counter-attacking Route 1 football, something that didn't always sit too well with the fans. Despite this, QPR would go on to survive thanks in much part to away wins at Stoke and Burnley, finishing six points above 22nd place Reading in the relegation zone, who were hampered by their own six point deduction due to financial problems. The survival party was short-lived and there were seemingly still some deeper issues at the club heading into the 23-24 season. 
The not-so-rock-and-roll football being led by Gareth Ainsworth frustrated the fans and the lack of money to buy players due to financial fair play constraints made tensions even higher. The upcoming announcement of the new state-of-the-art training facility was not enough to cover over the cracks as it had truly reached its boiling point. This resulted in a club legend in the form of Les Ferdinand leaving his role as director of football, closely followed by former owner Tony Fernandez cutting all ties with the club after 12 years. The departures wouldn't end there, with some of QPR's best talents in the form of Rob Dick and Sedi Dieng departing for other championship clubs and a lack of money coming into the club meant QPR would have to opt to sign players only on a loan or free transfer. QPR decided to get in some experience in the form of Jack Kolbeck, Asma Begovic and Steve Cook in the hope of shoring up the base of their team, with the addition of former player Paul Smith rejoining the club after a successful season in League 2. The state of the club was highlighted by the fact that they had to request to swap their first home fixture of the season in order to make it an away fixture due to being unable to get their pitch ready in time. The subsequent game resulting in a 4-0 loss to Watford, immediately plunging them to the bottom of the table. Despite the poor start, QPR managed to pick up a few good wins to help take them off the foot of the table before failing to win in the next nine matches, including six straight losses. This form was finally deemed enough and would end Gareth Ainsworth's time at QPR. The wild thing couldn't reproduce the magic he brought to the club as a player. He left the club in 23rd place, six points from safety, with his start to the season having a worse points per game ratio than Neil Critchley's time at the club. But at least this would be the end of the departures, or so they thought. Just three days later, long-time chairman Amit Bhatia would stand down from his role at the club, leaving this man as both the CEO and acting chairman. Action is needed and fast, and it looks like the new manager is going to be club legend and championship survival artist Neil Warnock. You've got to fucking die to get three points! Who won the championship with QPR, producing one of the best ballers the second tier has ever seen in the form of Adel Tarapt. It would really be poetic if he was to come in and get the job done. Just as all roads were pointing towards Warnock, QPR announced the arrival of relatively unknown manager Marty Cifuentes. Marty would pick up two points from his first three games, and although better than the weeks past, this is nowhere near good enough to keep you in the championship. This was followed by a week of pure chaos for QPR fans. Three games, three wins, including their first home and second home wins of the season, as well as the first time they had seen a win at the loft for nine months. Fans were left questioning if they had just found the next Pep Guardiola. A quick reality check was in order, as they would be reminded that teams can't completely change overnight, and the R's would go on to get two draws and five losses in the next seven games. But little did the championship know, that there was a new monster being made, and his name was Montclair Marty. So uh, yeah, obviously when I looked at him wearing the Monclesi, I was like, yeah, yeah, lads, today we're not losing. Marty Cifuentes would come out in a Montclair for QPR's crunch game versus Millwall. The Hoops would win the game 2-0, and this game has marked a new era at QPR. They would go on to make four solid signings over the January window and continue their form under their new designer manager. QPR look a completely new side, playing free-flowing, exciting football and attacking every game. They have only lost one of their last nine games, picking up 18 points along the way. This is form that, if kept up throughout the duration of a season, would put you in contention for the title. And since stepping into the role, only league leaders Leicester have conceded less goals, a team which QPR just beat. QPR are far from having the job done, as we know anything can happen in the championship. But if current form is anything to go off, they look most likely of the bunch to survive. They will hope they can keep their main man, Ilias Chair, out of jail till the end of the season, as he currently faces charges in Belgium for fracturing a man's skull with a rock. On his day, he's one of the best ballers in the championship, and he will be a key part in keeping them up. If they can keep all their key players, and obviously the main man, Montclair Marty, QPR may be genuine contenders for promotion next year. The turnaround the club has done in such a short time is truly impressive. As for our friend Mick Beale, he has since been fired from Rangers, hired by Sunderland and fired by Sunderland. With his reputation in the bin, you would have thought it couldn't get any worse for the old boss. Until someone found the burner account he was using to try to keep his job, Loyalty will not be forgotten. As for QPR, they are now loving life under Marty Cifuentes. So this is how Marty Cifuentes saved QPR from relegation. Like the video if you enjoyed, subscribe, peace.